administration ni Mayor Richard Gomez, marami tayong uh, projects na sinisimulan tapos it's ongoing right now and it's progressing. Basically po, namit po natin yung iba successfully and then yung iba po is and at the end of this year, mamit na po natin yung ibang targets. We are really pushed, no? hard para i-perform, no? para i-achieve yung mga targets natin. Para sa mga umukanon, nag-awang kami kanina na mo-avail sa ito mga servisyong panglawas na rin sa civil department o sa unong ka-health district centers na rin sa umok because um, karon atong ditutukan ang atong pag-advocate sa itong mga health services na libre kami makaabot lang to sa atong mga katilingban na rin sa dakbayan sa umok. Sa pamumunod na ni Mayor Richard Gomez, pinaot na ato ni uh, Panginabuhi. Blessed because it has vast flatlands, verdant mountains and forests, and at the same time, a coastal city, more known as a sugar vegetable capital of the region, and the fruit capital as well. We also have sizable areas planted to rice. He is so passionate about his projects and programs for agriculture. The City Agri Office has reciprocated this administration's support with enthusiastic implementation of projects and programs. Among them, purchase of new tractors that will help our farmers improve their efficiency in planting and harvesting, thus improving their profits. <clears throat> and to make sure that the tractors are used well and equitably among our farmers, Councilor Serafica has passed the Ormoc Farm Tractor Ordinance that sets the guidelines on its use and rentals. The city also holds its farmers in high regard. In fact, we have produced many outstanding farmers already. It is through the it is through hands and labor of our farmers that the city gets its food and the nation is being fed. And to inculcate respect for farmers and farming, we have launched the Gulayan sa Paralan program. It teaches students and their mentors alike how to grow their own food. And this way, our students will learn that food on the table goes through a tedious process of planting, watering, weeding, and back-breaking work. So before it reaches their mouth, this way, when they see a farmer whose hands are calloused and whose feet barely fit his shoes, they are looking at the man who is feeding the world. We have hosted the first Isayan Visaya, Eastern Visayas Vegetable Congress last August. Another one was the Third Regional Organic Agriculture Congress last July. We have also hosted the first Western Leyte Cacao Investment Forum last April. Yes, our dream is not to only produce cacao seeds, but to make chocolates to rival the world's best. It is a dream. Ingun sila, libre naman mangarap, di ba? As I mentioned earlier, that we are the fruit capital of Eastern Visayas, this is largely overlooked by our people who are used to seeing fruits in our streets the whole year round. But do you realize that we have the biggest plantations of pineapple here? The Bangkok Santol that you see being sold in Tacloban does not come from Bangkok. It comes from Ormo. Kasagaran sa yuta, gikan sa mga punggos. We are also the major source of rambutan in the region. We are even the jackfruit capital of Region 8. One farmer in Ormoc City is also now venturing into strawberry production. I myself is into bee and honey production. Okay. Sweet mango. <laughs> Did, <laughs> Do you know that Miss Elena Mendoza, our city agriculture, to work there, but Judith Paredes, who was appointed OIC, by the previous administration, took the ultimate sacrifice and volunteered to give up her post to Ms. Mendoza. Thank you so much. <laughs> How much is Judith? Ms. Yayan Mendoza. Ms. Mendoza's loss would be a loss to the City Agriculture Office and to our farmers. She was thinking of what was good for her mock. Thank you, Judith. Huh? Million for various programs. Some of these were BUB funds in 2014 that had to be returned to the national government. 
Ingon ko sa ila, I do not want any BUB projects na dili ma-implement. Kinahangla ng tanan na BUB projects. Okay, magplano man ta. Sige ta magplano. O dyan, biyaan na to. That should not happen. If you do not want to implement programs and projects, let's not even plan for it. So, kanang mga nabili in 2014, 2015, and 2016, ato nang gigamit, we revived them, and we are now benefiting from all this BUB project. Daghan salamat sa mga tao sa atong City Agriculture Office. Thank you so much. We have also strengthened our fishery sector. We have deputized 23 fish wardens, and our police are assisting them in seaborne patrol operations. We have given two patrol boats and fuel to help them in patrolling the Ormok Bay. We have also appointed eight fish sanctuary guards to make sure that our sanctuaries are safe from abuse. From January to June of 2017, 21 illegal fishermen have been apprehended and most of them are not from Ormok. Our very own Toto Loxin, our vice mayor, have also embarked on an artificial reef campaign in Naungan through donations from friends. He even personally oversaw the installations of the artificial reef diving underwater to make sure that it is done well. We're registered as of October 11, 2017. 100 kilo turtle just constantly. yesterday? The other day? Just, huh? Yesterday, no? Oh. Kauban si Dr. Jerry Penserga o si Tami Serafica and the Fisheries Department we released a 200 kilo turtle yesterday. Ang kanampawikan, the biggest caught so far in this part of our mock. Please to tend to a juvenile green turtle which was emaciated. He had eaten plastic fish nets. The turtle was only 10 kilos when caught. But it was already 17 kilos. So dispersed 312,000 tilapia fingerlings to 413 backyard fish farmers, 43,000 of which came from our very own fish hatchery and nursery. We also hope these backyard fisheries would also help increase the nutrition status of our constituents. Another 10 million from the BUB for fishery project is now ready to be, to be implemented. Hapit na. Ang development ngayon ng agriculture and fisheries ngayon sa administration ni Mayor Richard Gomez. Parang malaki ang agwat kasi Mayor is pressing for an agricultural development talaga. Uh, parang pri priority na talaga ni Mayor ang agriculture ngayon, maski hindi siya agriculturist. LGO ka rin sana sa anong pagpanghatag binhi o abono plus financing pa. Ang ay kay ikapasigar mo kay ninguminto man ang among abot ka rin gumikan sa hybrid nga gihatag sa gobyerno na mo. Saving what is left of our mock's environment and coping with the challenge of climate change have been the city's biggest problems. In fact, it is still affecting us today, and we will, it will continue to affect the future. Hence, the need for drastic... Flash flood came in, 5, 000, more than 5,000 people were perished. Tons of wood stumps, cut logs, and even freshly cut trillions, illegal logging continued which was big money to the capitalistas and survival for the cutters who were enslaved by utang na loob of sardines and a few kilos of rice in exchange for illegally cut illegal logging, the unregulated sand and gravel extraction and other unchecked environmentally damaging ways have also caused siltation to our seas, further pushing our fishermen into poverty as their catch grew nil by the years. Irrigations also suffered affecting our areas became brown and murky. Our women and children 
could not even take a bath or even wash your clothes in the rivers because sand and gravel concessionaires were mudding it day in and day out. It was a typical story of the rich trampling on the poor. Uprooting remaining trees and what have been replanted for the past 20 to 30 years, it has caused rising temperature in our cities. Here in the city, the bald mountains and often occurring landslides are also the main culprit why we have no water when there are rains. It would easily turn the water murky. And it is unfortunate that more than half a billion water system constructed by my predecessors eliminated two processes in the water purification that would have addressed this problem. Hence, when I became mayor, I saw that it was imperative to act on these issues, even if it meant crossing political supporters. Immediately, this administration ordered the suspension of sand and gravel operations in our rivers and only allowed the operators to resume after they have rechanneled the rivers and rehabilitated them. With the exception of Panilahan in Makabog, where some sand and gravel operators continue to abuse the river because their concessions are already on the other side of Ormok. Our SAG permittees here in Ormok willingly complied. We have also strictly collected the dues, which have increased our revenues dramatically since the beginning of my term. Because of intensified collections from sand and gravel operators, we've collected over 4 million from the operators from July to December of 2016, 40 pesos per cubic meter. However, since some personalities in government in the past have vested interest in sand and gravel businesses, we suspect that the rate, the tax rate was not increased. Our roads were easily destroyed by heavy trucks going to and fro. Now we are collecting 40 pesos per cubic meter from our sand and gravel operators. To further illustrate my point, in January to June of this year, we have already collected over 7, 7 million pesos compared to 2.4 million pesos for the same period in 2016. Previous years were even worse. As I said before, our rivers were raped and raped again in the past. And this will not happen during my term. I also plan to put up weighing scales for overloaded trucks. Over, uh, weighing scales will be placed on highways. They should not overload their trucks with sand and gravel or any produce for that matter because they will only destroy our roads and waste government resources. Overloading trucks will be penalized. This administration is not out to stop business, but we are here for businesses that are responsible to our communities in what they do. At this juncture, let me thank the sand and gravel concessionaires who heeded my call. Dagan salamat sa inyo. We are also in the process of drafting an ordinance that would limit our sand and gravel extraction in our rivers. I want the operations to limit it from 7 a.m. to 5 a.m. the afternoon. Any operations after 5 a.m. will be illegal. If you continue that, ah, madakpan ka, namba si Colonel Ramirez, ha? This will allow our community dwellers to enjoy the use of our river once more. At least, they'll be able to take a bath, wash their clothes, gather clear water from the river on the times that there is no extraction. I hope this will be acceptable to all. We will try to find the balance between business, the people, and our environment. The nice thing about this, sa gabi, mas makatog ng maayong mga community. Kaya wala na mag-operate, no? Wala na yung mag-salang gravel sa gabi, eh. In the area of forest law, and law enforcement, with the help of our police and Philippine Army, we have embarked on an intensified campaign to stop illegal logging in the city. Several illegally cut lumber have been confiscated. And while we know that there are still some palusot, this has been minimized already. Ormok is the first city in Eastern Visayas to have deputized 60 environmental officers by in guarding our environment. In the meantime, we have intensified tree planting at Arbor Day celebration. We planted over 1,000 fruit and ilang-ilang seedlings. Nakalitan ko, 
Kaya one day, pag mata na ako, nanay, 2,500. Ilang-ilang trees in my own backyard. Ipadasa akong congresswoman. Bako kay bakong asat doon, butang. May na lang namin yung nasa Barangay Esperanza. Nagutan ako ang uh, Kapgores. Palihog, itanom lang nato ang ilang-ilang gikan sa atong congresswoman. Kay, pag dili mong matanom, dili ko makatanday-tanday. <laughs> We thank the people and companies who join our Arbor Day celebration. We hope many more will join us next year. We are also taking care of our mangroves, which are natural barriers for strong winds and storms. Aside from being breeding grounds for marine life like fishes, shrimps, mud skipper. Our tambasakan, tambasakan. To tourists and ornithologists, we have mangrove replanting programs. Thank you also to those who responded to the call, the Ocean Conservancy, and the Philippine Coast Guard Auxiliary for the International Coastal Cleanup Day. Tons of garbage were gathered from our coasts and brought to our sanitary landfill. This is why Councilor Guito Irastorza is now in the process of drafting an ordinance to ban the use of plastics in Ormoc City by next year. Last October 11, together with Vice Mayor, we personally attended the launching of the No Plastics Day to show we support this program. We have to lessen the use of plastics and our oceans. I urge everybody, especially the barangays along the coast, to join this administration's goal to win the Masagana at Malinis Nakaragatan Awards next year. Nakakaingit ang palumpon, sila lang pero may madaog, no? We have to win it also. Eh, hatang ang first place sa ila, at ang second place, may problema. We have also passed the long overdue solid waste management ordinance to put teeth into our garbage waste segregation program. Under this program, we have five more garbage trucks coming in to augment our trash collection. We also have ordered for a compactor. We have also installed a septage facility at our public market so that effluent coming from wastewater is cleaned first before it goes out to the sea. As I mentioned earlier, we also have our septage facility at our sanitary landfill. Furthermore, in acceptance of the reality of climate change, we have strengthened the capabilities of our city disaster risk reduction management, the city disaster risk reduction and management office under the leadership of Siriaco Tolibao. We have now five brand new ambulances. We're also going to become the first CPR-ready city in the country. In cooperation with Ormoc City Medical Society and the Philippine Heart Association, almost 2,000 people, both health workers and civilians, have already been trained in hands-only CPR. And with a CPR-ready citizenry, studies show that we can reduce the mortality rate of such cases by as much as 35% by applying CPR and having AEDs available. In fact, our AED has already revived a tricycle driver who was not already breathing and did not have a pulse after suffering an attack just this week. Luckily, some of our residents and already CPR trained, that is when Mr. Nacho Pangilinan, Tindog Palihog, received the call about a man collapsing on the street during rush hour just last week, he immediately applied CPR. <laughs> when the ambulance arrived, our rescue team immediately used the AED and revived him. Thank you to Nacho for sharing your story and highlighting the importance of CPR and to the Philippine Heart Association for passionately pursuing the CPR training program. The distribution of relief programs and relief goods was done with dispatch. Thank you sa ato mga civic organizations for heeding my call to help during the last, uh, the last uh, earthquake. No, We had the smoothest and most transparent relief distribution operation the city is City Hall Lobby para tanan makita kung pila pang nabilin sa ato mga stock. Kaya kung ibutang nimo sa bodega, dili nimo makita. Sometimes mawa na lang, makawat or makawat sa mga ilaga. My heart was touched at the various civic clubs who reported every day to help receive the goods and distribute them. You were our eyes and ears 
and your selfless efforts also help the city maximize Alicat, React, and other groups save the city precious fuel by distributing goods using their own vehicles, their own fuel, their own money. They save the city precious manpower as they themselves distributed it. And importantly, they watch over the goods with eagle eyes so that the littlest solar lamp, the smallest donation made by cash or goods, are properly recorded and dispatched. Dagan salamat din yung tanan, daghang salamat kang Iking Caberos, who was there every day. Amon to si Iking. Nasa evacuation, naghatag pa karun. Thank you also to the Ormok Chamber for taking the challenge to raise funds for the earthquake victims. Dagan salamat. And keep safe the money from private sources. Orcha must raise more than 2 million pesos from private donors for our earthquake rehabilitation program. From government donors, we have uh, raised close to 4 million pesos already. Daga salamat sa mga siyudad. Tabang sa ato. Ang Kalaokan, Tagig, uh, Quezon City, Santa Rosa, San Pablo City. Daga salamat din yung tanan. And then, nanawag sa ako last week, Ang Cebu, magtabang sa ato. Yes. Napakin na kalinta na usap. But I will remember. Mandawi City as well. Thank you so much. Hasta ang maasin. Na, thank you. We have also been beset by shortage in water supply. While we are trying our best to resolve the problem, our council, through Environment Committee Chairman Councillor Guito Erastorza has passed the Rainwater Harvesting Ordinance. This ordinance imposes that all houses and buildings constructed from the time this ordinance was passed should have rainwater collectors. This will not only ensure that our people will have water for non-food use in case of service interruptions, but also help them save on their water bills. So far, our office of the building official, a newly created office, has supported no objection to the imposition of the said ordinance. As of this report, we have approved, we have already approved 64 residential construction permits, 36 commercial building permits, all of which have incorporated rain harvesters in their designs. And we look forward to the day when the people will not look at rainwater harvesters as an imposition, but a good proactive measure for their convenience. Dagan salamat sa atong Office of the Building Official, Sonia Antonio. Thank you so much. Last August, Ormoc City was chosen by the Climate Change Commission as one of the five demonstration cities for building climate resiliency through urban plans and designs. With this, I can say we are on the right track. <laughs> on which side of the coin you stand? Traffic is a tricky topic. Before I became mayor of the city, everybody complained how bad the traffic is absconding the sidewalks as their extensions. People who drive their own cars complained that the streets were narrow, vehicles parked wherever they want, tricycles were undisciplined. Sige lang mag turn maski asa. Kunya, pagliko, gamito man ang tail pang signal. Passengers on the other hand were spoiled. Gusto nila door-to-door -door service and delivery sa ila, hatod sundo. They just want to get off and on anywhere. There's also kanang for private use parking space issue, which by law is not a private space because it is an easement required for pedestrians and public parking. The first order of business as a new mayor was to put order in our streets. It was not an easy task taking out the streets of illegal vendors. They threatened me that they would not vote for me anymore. Some would tell me of sad stories of how their children would starve. Kundili sila makahalin, kung patangtang sila sa atong mga kalsada. However, we persevered, and somehow I could say that we have succeeded. Ang atong mga fruit vendors, na sila isang lugar. I always believe that if you want to look for something, it would be best na na sila sa usaka lugar. Mangita kag fruits, Ah, sila sa koob. Tinood? Dili pwede na magkalat lang sila sa atong syudad. Yun niya, maghugaw pa sa atong makalsada. With the streets cleared of illegal vendors, especially on crucial areas like corners, 
we then embarked on our traffic management scheme. We've had our traffic enforcers trained and deputized by the LTO so that they would have the power to impose existing city regulations. As with clearing the street of vendors, the resistance was huge. In fact, a traffic enforcer was mauled by an irate motorcycle, but we persevered. Bikulata ang atong tricycle driver. Akong gipangita, kininangulata. Hilom na sa karun. <laughs> and traffic enforcer, traffic enforcer, enforcer na sa karun. Until now, when our street situation has visibly improved, there are still ridiculous demands like the take off the traffic enforcers. Kaya ang mga traffic enforcers, ingun sila, are being blamed as causing the traffic. Unya, if they see no traffic enforcers sa kalsada, magigun sila, nga nung walay traffic enforcers. Asa tamo lugar. Nonetheless, we implemented our traffic rules strictly, like the no helmet law. People howled and slammed me. Galit sila kang gomes. Nga nung ayaw ipasuot ang helmet, ingun sila, anti porno ko. But with political will, Motorists have learned to follow the law and our doctors are now happy to know that incidents of fatal head injuries among our motorists have dwindled. Most of the head injury causes they get now are from accidents happening outside the city. Ang mga maksidente na walay helmet, kasagaran, dili na taga-ormok, taga-gawas na. Gigan sa Albuera, gigan sa Berida, or gigan sa Kananga. Under the watchful eye of, again, Councillor Guito Irastorza, Committee Chair on Traffic Management, one-way schemes were also experimentally imposed. As expected, it came under heavy criticism. However, with perseverance and the same political will, we used it in implementing the helmet law. The driving public had no choice but to follow, and immediately, commuters noticed that with one-way schemes, the traffic movement is smoother as everybody is going in the same direction. Even tricycle drivers were the strongest opposition. Ilan na notice na maayo pala ang one-way scheme diri sa atong siyudad. Kay gamay man ang mga kalsada, huot ka ayo. We also impose a traffic ban. Kana mga delivery trucks lang makasod, but only on certain times of the day. It also helped ease the traffic. Again, Nag-oppose ang mga negosyante. Ingun sila, nga nandili makadeliver ang mga trucks. We told them there should only be times where they can enter the city. Kahit dagkuman ka mga trucks, unya gamay atong mga kalsada. Maghuot, that will cause severe traffic sa atong siyudad. We are now implementing ordinances regulating our parking. I know that there are opposition again to this. Daghan mo mag-oppose ato, bayan sa traffic. But this is where leadership comes into play. If I listen to all the noise, and not stay focused on the job on hand, our traffic situation would once more return to the chaotic roads we've had before. I'm also proud to say that Ormo City is the first city in the region to implement speed limits and the anti-drunk and distracted driving law. As my birthday gift to Ormo City last April 7, I turned over five breathalyzers to our police to, deter to determine accidents. Mandatory na ni. Pag may aksidente, automatic mag-breathalyzer. I am also determined to implement the speed limit law. And to do this, I bought four speed guns for our police to help determine if our motorists are over-speeding. We are also first in the region to have speed guns, limits, and be more careful drivers. If each driver each road user is careful. We can avoid the necessary loss of lives of fathers leaving their wives and kids because of drunken driving, of mothers mourning for the loss of their sons and daughters because of some stupid joyriding. One life lost or road accident is one too many lives lost. Pag-upende, Chargo, Gomez, sa pagkamayor. Katulad ng mga, ano na, ng internoan, nagiging maganda na dahil yung mga patawagin ng mga buhayan na wawala dahil mayroong mga
Ayos o mga traffic enforcer na mga nagbabantay sa mga turnuan Pati yung hanay namin sa turnuan malinis kasi Binigyan kami ng paradaan kung saan kami nakapisto Kung kung naman dito sa sudan Maganda na yung nagawa dahil yung, dahil yung mga kasada dito Ginawang tuyo one way kung saan ka talaga Walang traffic na dahil dinadiritsa ng ano ng presikon namin eh uh, Sa akin bilang isang guro Nakikita ko talaga yung mga malaking pagbabago sa pamamahala ni Mayor Richard. Unang-una, sa trafiko, medyo maluwag-luwag ang aring trafiko ngayon dito sa Ormok. Ormok City, you started building roads, putting up covered courts. Dagat ng mga projects dito sa Ormok City. There's uh, a lot of data to be said. Street lights, we have completed the 249 million worth of projects already, while another 99 million peso is ongoing. We are also coordinating with all infrastructure efforts with the office of our Congresswoman so that there would be no duplication of projects. Our Congresswoman, permita magpasigar po sa Ormok, dagat mga projects. Pero sa Congresswoman, simple lang iya. For 2018, na ako'y 4 billion projects for all for the district of Leyte. Lupig. <laughs> Lupig ta. Our congresswoman also has projects of her own, like the construction of a six-lane coastal road from Naungan to San Juan that would cut travel distance from 19 kilometers to only 4 kilometers. We wanted to widen the Bantige diversion leading towards uh, Barangay Simangan. We failed this year because of lack of coordination from, uh, from landowners. We will try it once more for next year to coordinate with all the owners of the land traversing the whole diversion road. If we will not succeed, that will be the last of the diversion road for, for that area. We, want, we wanted kanang diversion road na bago to be four lanes. We had the chance to do it this year. We will try again next year. Pag dili nato mabuhat, sorry na lang. But the congresswoman will have to move forward and develop other roads such as San Juan to Naungan. Imagine six lanes ang ila. That's over 300 million pesos of roads for these people. All the infrastructure projects that the Gomez administration will be implementing in the city will be well constructed. All roads will be of highway standards because we are not only building these roads for today but for our future generations. Our most ambitious dream project is to establish the Lake Danao Water Supply Project. This project has already been endorsed by the Regional Development Council and we are hoping it will get the blessing of the President. If not, we will find ways to make it a reality. The Department of Finance has already come to Ormoc to help us find financing. Ormoc is growing fast and we need to plan ahead. Ahead means 15 years from now. Marami na yung mga proyekto na yun na road, road concreting at yung uh, pinalawak o pinalapad na yung mga daan natin. So mayo, maraming salamat sa Walang sawang pagtulong sa amin sa DepEd, lalong-lalo na sa mga pinatayo mong bagong mga paralan, classrooms, upang yung lahat natin ng mga mag-aaral dito sa Ormoc ay makita. Maraming salamat rin mayo sa mga pinatayo mong mga classrooms, additional classrooms, lalo na sa mga yun, sa mga lugar no, na malalayo. Nagbibong industries like uh, building a new mall, Yan, uh, I believe, uh, parang I heard na uh, magkakaroon ng hypermart. Nagulat lang ako lately kasi nga uh, yung dati namin kung saan ako lumaki, big roads na. From day one, I vowed that my administration would be participatory and transparent to all our Mohanons. I also told you that I believe in leading by example and that we would set things right of what were wrong before. So on my first day of office, I set the tone 
for our city employees that even if I am mayor, I am also a public servant just like them. As such, I made sure that I report to office on time. Sometimes, most of the time, earlier than most employees. I also ordered new IDs be issued immediately. Big ones that our employees should wear all the time. Also wear my ID at the city hall all the time. To minimize waste sa uh, resources, og times sa my employees, I told our og social media dere sa atong office. But there are few offices that can use and access a social media. Sa media, sa tourism, those who who use and uh, publish at mga events frequently sa mga social media. <clears throat> Having won the elections fair and square, I expected our department heads to be mindful that they do not serve the mayor alone, but their loyalty should be for the people. I admit that the road in that area was rocky, and to say the least, but we have all survived that journey except for a few who did not make the cut and opted to retire early and soon to be out of the city hall. During our mancom, our department heads reported to me, Vice Mayor and the City Council, what was happening in the city, what needs to be done. In the course of those conferences, we found out that there were a lot of laws that were not being implemented here in our mock city. We also had antiquated ordinances that needed revisions and amendments. Even revenue collection was down. We were a city who had been relying too much on the internal revenue allotment, but neglected local tax collection. It is important that people understand the importance of local tax collection. The use of the ERA is bound by caps imposed by the DPM, but we can use our local tax collection for any program or project we deem is good for our city. We have already put order in our public market. Our garbage collection is becoming efficient and our city is clean already. Our streets are now brighter with new LED lamps because our policy of transparency and no entrance fee. Philips, a reputable company, joined in the bidding for providing for 1,641 street lights from an estimated 33 million peso based on prices in the past. We brought those street lights to only 22 million pesos, and that's a savings of 11 million pesos para sa atong ciudad. With the help of our city council, we passed ordinances and amended old ones and made sure was able to pass 42 city ordinances already, aside from appropriation ordinances and resolutions. A big round of applause area where we immediately sought to improve sa atong ciudad. Orwasa was down. We were only collecting 35% at that time. We have a record of 22,000 active consumers. However, during our Mancom, City Treasurer Delia Vilvar said that only around 5,600 of these were active payers. So what we did was, I told them, ang dili magbayad, kinalan, ma-disconnect right away. Kung gusto nyo ng tubig, magbayad ta. Para fair and square, kanang magbayad, na itubig. Unya, kanang dili magbayad, na po tubig, dili na pwede. If you want water, you pay. Otherwise, you get disconnected. So thank you so much sa doing their job. There's also an effort of our real property tax division. We have experienced a massive increase in collection from January to June of 2016. We've had a collection of only 44 million. In the same period year of this year, we've collected 94 million pesos. Congratulations to our Treasury Office. The increase of the RPT collection, which is also the source of our special education fund, has enabled us to fund scholarship programs and other education related activities, down to better services. In the Gomez administration, this is our goal. In the sand and gravel extraction fees, we also registered a huge increase. In 2014, 2015, a year when many people were reconstructing their houses, an SMC side mall, 100,000 and 6,200,000 respectively. In January to June of 2016, the collection was only 
2.4 million. When I became mayor, the collection for July to December 2016 rose to 4.2 million pesos. This year, from January to June, we've already collected 7.3 million pesos, even higher than the annual collections for the past years. Gamay na lang ni. Tulok pages na lang. Aside from increasing local tax collections, we have also set we have also set in place measures to ensure that your tax money is protected and put into good use. For example, the city's biggest expense is fuel. The transactions of the past were put into question because the city fuels were stocked at a gasoline station owned by the family of the past in administration. They ignored recommendations of the COA for the city to have its own tank. Ang ilang rason that they raised was then that city, city's fuel tank was busted. And that is where we are getting all our fuels needed for this. And I want you to take note that now we have more vehicles than before. But take a look at our comparative fuel consumption. 2015 to 2016, a mayor, yeah. 2015, mayor's office, 920 million pesos. For Orwasa, was 889 million. Karon, January to June, 162 na lang. Sa mayor's office, in 2015 to 2016, from 920, now 156 million na lang. Imagine, mas nagantang sasakyan ka ron, pero lesser ang konsumo nato sa fuel. This is just an illustration of how we at the Gomez administration works. As you can see, our fuel expense at the mayor's office is very much lower than the previous administrations. Yet, we even have more vehicles. In fact, we are very open to the scrutiny of the public sector, of the private sector. Currently, we have more than 60 accredited NGOs, civic organizations, and people's organizations. They occupy seats in special bodies and are part of our city development council. We would like to thank my partner, Dr. Jerry Penserga, for this. Pag wala si Dr. Jerry Penserga, I am there to replace him. <laughs> He has been very passionate in accrediting these groups because he believes that we in government do not have the monopoly of good ideas. It is always good to listen to the grassroots because they are the people we have sworn to serve. I am happy to announce that our dear senior citizens, starting this December, will start receiving 500 pesos Christmas gifts, aside from the 1,500 yearly birthday gifts na madawat nila. I have also personally delivered 100,000 peso cash gifts to five centenarians there is atong ciudad. For our mock's betterment, in a short while, we will show you a video of some of the projects and programs we have on the planning board for our city. My administration still has a long way to go in achieving all what we have dreamt for our mock. I invite all family, friends and supporters, our city workers and department heads, our private sector, our youth, and all the constituents to accompany me in this journey. Let's get our mock moving again. Dagan salamat, maayong hapon sa tanan. Mabuhi ang Ormok City.
together with our IT group and SDI, we have developed our own MyOrmog application. And I will show you how it works. Pag open mo sa cell phone, just download MyOrmog app. You press home. Pag makita niyo ang home, magawas na ang tanan. If, for example, you want to go to the hotels, para makita niyo ang mga hotels na naadres sa Ormog, it will tell you kung asa mo malocate ang mga hotels. It will also show you ang ilang rates, ang ilang phone numbers. If you want to go to uh, destinations, it will tell you how to get there, what we have. And this application is very timely sa atong generation that this app will be updated regularly aron magamit nato. And this will be used and will be seen, not just in Ormoc, but in the whole world that will download my Ormoc app. Again, salamat. Mayang hapon sa talan. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mayor Richard Gomez, the body will have a recess. Session will resume at 2 in the afternoon. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.